video provides a way to make a human connection between your brand and your potential customers. It's a very powerful tool. That being said, why don't more B2B marketers create video content for their companies? Well, there's some misconceptions out there, one of which being that video has to be a high production uh, endeavor, very expensive, very slick. And in reality, that attitude is so 20 years ago. Uh, and so today I'll be joined with a video expert and we'll talk about these common misconceptions about video. Um, in reality, what types of form factors people are using, ideal lengths, ideal production value, how to get started and how to measure measure the ROI of video content. I got a lot out of this episode. I know you will too. Let's do this. Welcome to Content Marketing Engineered, your source for building trust and generating demand with technical content. Here is your host, Wendy Covey. Hi, and welcome to Content Marketing Engineered. On each episode, I'll break down an industry trend, challenge, or best practice in reaching technical audiences. You'll meet colleagues, friends, and clients of mine who will stop by to share their stories. And I hope that you leave each episode feeling inspired and ready to take action. Before we jump in, I'd like to give a brief shout out to my agency, True Marketing. True is a full service agency located in beautiful Austin, Texas, serving highly technical companies. For more information, visit truemarketing.com. And now on with our podcast. Hey everyone, well today I'm here with Brian Fitton. He's the founder of Go Rogue X, and we're gonna be talking all things video marketing. So thank you for being here today, Brian. I'm looking forward to our talk. Absolutely, super excited to be here, thanks. Cool, well, just to give our listeners a little context, tell us a little bit about yourself and your agency. Yeah, so we are a video marketing, video podcast agency that focuses on mainly repurposing content and uh, making sure to kind of stand out from the crowd in your marketing efforts, uh, specifically in the B2B space. And how did you get into this line of business? Oh, well, that's a long story. I will make it as short as possible. But uh, so actually, I started out uh, doing photography um, back in mid 2000s. I had moved for my corporate job. Um, and so I was moving around the country and doing some photos and different things like that. And then eventually got into some video work and moved uh, back home to Northwest Arkansas and kind of got plugged into a very, very creative community up here. And just learned all of the video marketing that side project type of stuff um, that I eventually was able to take full time into into this agency, which is uh, kind of combines all my all my passions of marketing, content marketing, creation, graphic design, photography, um, into doing it specifically for small businesses who don't don't necessarily have that ability, or they may have a marketing person, right? Uh, but they don't necessarily have um, the know-how of all the creative side. And so we try to fulfill a lot of those needs, uh, in that, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's been a, it's been a long journey and a lot of trial and error. I mean, I've had multiple businesses and a kind of serial entrepreneur of trying to figure out what sticks, you know, and trying a bunch of things. And, uh, so it's been a lot of fun, but now, now we're here and, and, uh, really, really enjoying this. It almost kind of came at the right time as well, especially with our world going very virtual mm -hmm. um, and businesses really having to pivot into that that virtual space. So no kidding. Well, I'm a little envious of your studio. <laughs> and <laughs> we were we were talking a little bit before this episode started. You have someone there helping you with your sound levels and your lights. And here I am in my home office with my ring light. <laughs> and just a little jealous right now. <laughs> uh, no, it's it's uh it's been a, a work in progress for for a long time. It's been a big dream of mine to always have when I started photography to have a studio. Uh, mm -hmm. but we've we've moved from a couple different locations, uh, but ended up actually. Uh, here in downtown Bentonville, Arkansas, which is home of Walmart. So the Walmart home office, I can literally see it from outside of our, our office space. And so, um, but uh, set up down here, it's, it's been a lot of fun. We, I'll tell you, it's, it's a lot of work to get everything right. And the more tech you get involved, the more complicated it gets. And so it is one of those things that like ring light and a USB microphone or an XLR <laughs> microphone that that's just, it's easy. You know, it's going to work. You turn it on and it goes and you don't have to worry about it. Once you start doing all of this, that's when all the problems start, start popping up. So. so that, so that's the key word today, complicated, or rather, mm. does it have to be complicated? So I think you keyed in on the theme that I'd, I'd like to focus on. 
So, uh, so let's start with a very basic question. Is video really all that important, Brian? Should it, should it, is the, is it worth it? Well, I mean, if you don't, if you're not concerned about, you know, converting sales or anything like that, then no, it's not, not very important <laughs> at all. So. Who wants sales? <laughs> who, who wants that, you know? <laughs> uh, so our, our main tagline is put a face with your brand, right? And so that is one of the things that we really focus on is that connection, that human connection. Um, and we don't just... We don't just necessarily do it through the marketing routine, but um, I'm, I'm a big fan of the app Marco Polo. I don't know if you if you've heard of it or if you guys yeah. use it or anything, but oh, I connect with our clients through that because I want them to see our face, see my face, uh, see what I'm working on. That that just provides a human level of of connection that you can't necessarily get um, through just photos. Uh, and even you know, it's a very important, obviously, with copy, but um, you know, audio is important as well, but I think video is kind of at least the starting pillar to kind of work down from there. Okay. Um, you know, and I'll add to that. We recently did a research report on how engineers and technical buyers seek and consume information. And I am just stunned that we're at a place now where 96% of engineers watch videos for work. 96%. Wow. And, uh, and we, we asked how long, and over half of them watch at least one hour or more. And again, for work, not, not for pleasure. So uh, if, if people think that the behavior is, yeah, this is more of a B2C thing, it's absolutely not. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I think I completely people, agree. Yeah, yeah. So people that want those conversions should keep on listening. Is what I hear. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, so, so if video is is important and 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 valued, then why are so many B two B marketers intimidated by adding video to their content mix? So, just from my experience, I mean, I've worked in the uh, the corporate world for about fourteen years, and just understanding the monstrosity of those types of businesses that you don't want to, you know, there's a lot of privacy stuff that they have to, you know, and you have to go through media training. I've gone through multiple media training, uh, you know, different courses and stuff like that, and they're always very leery of of doing video because you can mess that up if it's not high end production. They feel like that it has to be this big to do mm -hmm. uh, when it really doesn't. And we've learned that through just even the last several years of, of marketing in general is people want that authentic connection. They want to see it, uh, you know, a Facebook live or a, a LinkedIn live. That's not a fully produced thing. They want to see you mess up and stumble over your words and <laughs> ramble as I, I like to do a lot. And, and because that, that makes you very real. And so yeah. a lot of times it, it helps them to see what doing business is going to be like with you. And uh, I think a lot of companies just they are still kind of in that old management of like, we don't really understand it. So we're kind of just, we're scared to kind of jump out there because we don't want to mess up. Right. Mm -hmm. And so we just stick with what we've known for a long time. And I think that that a lot of times is going to, it really, it really, uh, you know, puts you behind your competition because, and that's one thing we talk about is like the comp your competition is already looking at doing this. They may already be doing it. And so a lot of times it takes one person to step out and then everybody else follows suit. Um, so try <laughs> to be that one person. Yeah. So. Yeah. And, and I, the quality question comes up a lot. And I think there's just fear that if, if it's not a top level production, then it will be harmful for your brand. And so, so what do you think's happened to change that? I mean, it, did that used to be the case? And then with social media, things have changed and made video more approachable or what was that turning point? Yeah, absolutely. So I, I've worked on multiple just kind of higher end production shoots and different things like that and assisted. And uh, we, it was that opinion, especially, you know, 2010, 2014, 15. Uh, it really was that it, you needed to have the sit down. Let's make this look as beautiful as possible. We're going to pay a crew, you know, $25,000 to come out and we're going to do a talking head video and B roll and all this stuff. And that, that was the case back then. It kind of showed, Hey, we're on another level. But our, you know, just like, you know, buyers become aware and marketers kind of ruin everything, honestly. Um, <laughs> what? <it's>, uh, <laughs> it happens. It, it just happens. I, I love marketing. But it is one of those things that we, we kind of ruin that to where people become savvy to what you're doing, right? And so uh -huh. they look at it like, oh, I see this as high end and produced. They're probably trying to sell me something. They're trying mm. to whatever it is. And so a lot of times going into that level of Hey, we're just going to make this very, very unique and simple. And, and a lot of that time, at least what we've done and what we've seen is that converts a lot more because again, it makes you real. And so there was kind of that turning point, especially with 
with social media, um, I think everybody, you know, went after the big Super Bowl ads and that was kind of your, your big deal, right? You wanted to high end produce funny commercial, whatever it was. Um, but that's kind of a shot in the dark. And once it's done, it's done. Yeah. And so if you're trying to generate a lot of content, there's no way that you can keep up the budgets of 20, 30, $50,000 to keep creating content. And then you're not, you're not doing anything with it on the back end, right? I remember lots of those shoots and people would hire us to come out and I'm like, hey, what, what did you guys do with that video that we shot? You know, that you paid us a lot of money to do. And they're like, well, we put it on YouTube and I only got a few views and we didn't really That's do anything it? else with it. That's oh, it. Oh my yeah. goodness. No, and I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> crazy. That's so crazy. And so it just makes it easier now. It's more affordable to yeah. create that more authentic content. And, uh, and again, that obviously the bottom line matters for most businesses. And so it's mm -hmm. just getting them to kind of move into that area that, Hey, it's okay to be a little more authentic, you know, to not be so perfect. Yeah. So when a company comes to you and I know you work a lot with small to medium sized businesses, um, with your company today. So when they come to you and they say, I'm interested in adding video to my content mix, or maybe it's, it's probably something more specific. Like I want to put a video about my company and my website. Mm -hmm. So um, how do you make those decisions of the types of video you should use? And, um, you know, walk me through that process a bit. Absolutely. So, I mean, there are several types of videos that you really do need for your website. You have to have ones that are going to be you know, showing who you are, your mission, your why behind what you do, um, you know, so maybe so highlighting some of your teams and stuff like that. And that's a lot of times our, our entry into working with a client is, hey, we just need a sit down, you know, talking head video to talk about what we do. And, um, and so a lot of times, again, moving into that next conversation of, hey, you know, people need to be educated, right? What are, what are the questions that a lot of your, your buyers are asking? What is the question you get asked all the time? And I guarantee you, people can come up with, oh, we they always ask these five or 10 things. I'm like, that's the stuff you need to be doing a weekly video on educating and then putting them on your website as a frequently asked questions. Like you said, 96% of your engineers are watching videos. And so how amazing would it be to have that blog post with that video up top hosted, you know, even just on YouTube and just embed it on your blog to give them that option to be able to watch it or listen to it or read it, however mm -hmm. they want to consume that information. And so usually that's, those are the next steps that we go into. Um, and obviously video podcasting is blowing up right now. And so that is, has been our main focus of making sure to even use it as kind of a lead generation tool as well, like interview your potential clients or somebody you would think would yeah. be a great fit. And that's also a great way to to honestly see if they would be a good client <laughs> because sometimes you think and then all of a sudden you get to talking with that person that uh you know whoever's you know the gatekeeper or maybe even the decision maker and you realize ah, they might not be but it was great content you got to we got to promote you and your brand um as well as you know make a great connection and so um, there's a lot of useful tools that that video can be a part of mm -hmm. I, I know for our agency, uh, so my own marketing of true marketing, uh, we used to blog twice a week and, and then we had so much blog content. We started repurposing and, you know, doing a mixture of new and repurposed. And so now, you know, the evolution of course, is exactly what you said. Let's mix in video to this and not have it just be always the written word. And for many on the team, they would rather get in front of the camera and talk than, uh, you know, stare at that blank sheet of paper, mm -hmm. so to speak, on your computer and with the cursor blinking at you. Yeah. Uh, and then it's easier to bring in customers and interview them. So um, it's it's interesting when you get over that hump of equipment and quality and oh, the strangeness of being in front of the camera and think about how easy this could be to produce, uh, those, those um, barriers start falling by the wayside. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Yeah, And I think even with the pandemic that has really opened up uh, just the humanity of us all. Like, you know, somebody said the word for 2020 was uh, you're on mute. You know what I mean? Like that's <laughs> that really? the, the phrase, that phrase for 2020. Yeah. Oh, it, wow. And that, that just made it uh, again, we're, we're all trying to figure this out. I've got three preschoolers at home. So taking mm -hmm. calls at home and that somebody's running in with, you know, something or half naked or so, I don't know. There's all kinds of things. It's a circus <laughs> around our house. And so, uh, but people understand that now. And I think there's some empathy in that mm -hmm. um, to where, you know, again, this pandemic kind of made it real has been hard for all of us, but it's, it's made it very real in the business sense of, Hey, we just kind of have to be ourselves rather than this polished version of who we are. Yeah. How do marketers measure whether or not their investment in video is paying off? 
So we we do a couple different things. So we obviously go through some different campaigns, whether that be, hey, are you focused on a branding a- aspect, right? Or you just want to get your name out there, create some content and, uh, you know, promote yourselves as kind of a thought leader in the industry. Um, or are you looking more in the line of, hey, I would love for this to be kind of a lead generation, a connection mm-hmm. tool. Um, that's where we can kind of go. We, we have one client that um, literally is working on a $3 million deal because they had somebody on their podcast unintentionally. It wasn't an intention to say, hey, this is going to be our client. It's just, hey, you have a great story. Let's talk. Let's work together. And then what happens is um, you usually have a potential client through that connection, too. It's like, hey, they're doing this really cool thing. Oh, I learned about them. We made this connection. You need to work with them. Um, So really being able to track you got to be able to track those things uh, because if you're just looking at it as, hey, this is just a video that we're doing or a podcast or something like that, um, you're not going to see the ROI uh, on the back end because it just kind of slips through the cracks. And so you really do have to track all of that and make sure, hey, that connection, that interview that we did, it led to these three sales or led to three three other connections uh, in our industry, something like that. Yeah, there's qualitative metrics. And uh, I, I can't get over the the idea that a podcast could be a lead generation uh, machine, or sorry, a sales generation machine by inviting prospects. Mm-hmm. I, I've i heard this many times now, and it just, it, it was never something I had at the forefront of my mind when I started this podcast a year ago. And I just think it's brilliant. So uh, mm-hmm. I want to keep that in mind uh, for sure. <laughs> well, well, I, I know, I, oh, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, and I, I think you have to, we, we actually on one of our recent episodes, we talked about this. If you go with that intention of I'm going to land this client because I'm going to have them on. <laughs> oh, it'll it, never work. That. Yeah, it'll it never, never work. works. Yeah. <laughs> uh, go into it with that genuine, like, hey, I really want to connect with this person. Um, and if something comes out of it, great. Well, let's demo our product or whatever it is. Uh, that's fantastic. Yeah. But don't go in with that mentality because they'll, they'll, they can sniff it out. You know that your yeah. buyers know that. So. Absolutely. Well, uh, True Marketing, we just uh, redesigned our website late last year. And as part of that effort, we recorded the corporate video, like you talk about, I love like, it. you know, here's yeah. our team and, and we put it up there. And, and we also have one for each service area that we um, are still in, you know, post-production work on. And so what we're planning on doing is measuring, uh, you know, time on site and how that is changed once we get these videos live. So we've looked, we have some good statistics on how each service page is performing with the redesign. And then now as we add video, we want to see what that inflection does. So I'm hoping we'll have an interesting case study of just quantitative metrics of how that investment paid off. And, yeah, yeah. you know, already we were seeing a lot of time on site change, I think just for having that corporate video on the homepage. So it looks great. I, your you. website too. I mean, obviously you've been on it several times and and I love, I love the layout and everything. And so hopefully we'll, we'll get ours hopefully to your level at some point. So it's beautiful. I love it. Thank you. Well, hey, that's that's why we're talking, right? We can help each other. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. Well, how we've talked a little bit about um, blog posting and how you can put video into there. Um, what are some other ways in which marketers can squeeze out more investment when they create videos? Uh, I think the biggest thing and one of my favorite topics is the repurposing, right? So we talked about blog posts and doing the initial pillar piece of content. Um, so chopping that up, especially LinkedIn, making sure it's all formatted correctly, making sure that you understand different people on different platforms. So if you are posting on Instagram or even Facebook, understanding the mentality that people are, are when they're on that platform, how are they consuming that content? Um, you know, how long does it need to be? What doesn't, what does the, uh, the actual, you know, uh, I guess even the the tagline or headline or something like that. What does that need to be to really grab that attention? Um, there's just again, so many even podcasters out there. I see them in all kinds of podcast groups. They just they don't they don't necessarily utilize that that piece of content uh, that they really really could be. You put a lot of time and investment. You know, you have a guest on and they they've you know sacrificed their time to to be on your show. Like do them justice by promoting them by by you know creating some additional pieces of content there uh, that can really benefit your audience, obviously. Um, but there's, there are a lot of ways of doing that, of repurposing that when it comes to graphics or, you know, caption videos or um, even shorter YouTube videos. Um, we have even moved into how do you structure your podcast to where, you know, bullet points. So that way, you know, when you go back to cut and edit those, you know, those timestamps. And so that way it makes the editing process a lot easier on the back end too. So that way you can 
create a whole workflow uh, for your content where it's not just great. We did the recording and it's done, you know, and move it's on. Done. Put a bow on it. We're done. Yeah. Oh, I wish. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> never is. Never is. <laughs> Are there uh, target links that you recommend for social versus YouTube versus a full episode of whether it's a video podcast or, or something else? Yeah, you mean target links specifically, like um, how where are you directing people back to? I guess from no, I meant I meant the length of the video. So, for oh, instance, link. yeah, when 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 I put this video we're creating, we usually do a video short that we share on LinkedIn, and then we'll put the full episode on YouTube. Um, but I'm wondering, you know, is there a certain time frame that's optimized? Like, is it at one minute or you know something like that? Yeah, yeah. I apologize. I'm so no, it's okay. Yeah. Um, so the links, I mean, it really does depend, um, first test out everything that you do, right? Because your audience is different than my audience. It's everybody's audiences are different. And so, um, test that out to actually see how many, obviously impressions that you're getting and stuff like that. But the ideal is uh, long form on YouTube, right? People go there to sit down and, and, and watch a longer video. Mm -hmm. Um, when it comes to LinkedIn, that two to three minute mark, we've really seen some success with as well. Interesting. Um, but yeah, that 30 second is a good way to kind of hit somebody with with a drive. Uh, if you're doing a kind of a one by one mm -hmm. um, video, that those need to be probably under 30 seconds. And the same mm -hmm. for Instagram, uh, just because people are they're scrolling, right? You want to stop the scroll. And so it just it just depends. If you're doing the wide form, you can usually go a little bit longer with that content because people kind of expect that to like, mm -hmm. hey, this is in the traditional, you know, nine by sixteen format. So uh, I'm expecting to watch that a little bit longer. And so uh, it just depends. But we we've, we've been testing out story sets as well, like longer stories, shorter stories. Is there an in screen with that? And there's again, there's lots of stuff. But I, I say test it out to yeah. kind of see test, and then track test, that. Test. Yeah, yeah, good, good. How important are captions? I feel like this is a dumb question, but I just in case someone's saying, ah, I don't want to do the work of captions. It is some work. It is some work. Uh, again, it, it is important for the platform, right? So for YouTube, no, I wouldn't I wouldn't go through a whole episode and, and put all the captions. They kind of auto-generate as well for you. Um, LinkedIn, I think it is important, especially with a, a a headline that's really going to grab attention that's going to solve a problem for them mm -hmm. um we always talk about uh, i'm i'm a terrible copywriter i'm 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 the audio video guy like that's why we <laughs> have amazing people on our team that do great at copy uh, but it is that of having a headline that's going to evoke the emotion right mm -hmm. and so what why, why you know uh why should i watch this what what problem is it going to solve for me um and then being able to you know the captions are are built for them to stop and see whether or not that's going to be valuable for them. And then they'll click into it to then explore mm -hmm. more, or listen to the whole thing and then see your link. Hey, go check out the full blog post or the full video uh, about what I was just talking about if you want more information. So uh, mm -hmm. it's really to grab that attention to like, because most people, I think, you know, a 2019 survey was like 85% of people watched videos without the audio on. So that's 85%. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You could have just said that only. <laughs> so, <laughs> wow. I'm a convinced. long answer to that. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's good. Uh, how about transcripts? I mean, uh, going along with captions, that's another thing that takes time and someone editing that, uh, are they worth it? Uh, I think it is still is. Uh, that's that that's that long form. Uh, and some people still read the transcripts. Uh, I it goes back to and you obviously know more about this, but just even with SEO purposes, right? Having those transcripts are, are it's important for that. But then also um, just giving somebody the format to be able to read it. So we usually do a summary, and then we'll do some show notes, so timestamp stuff, and then usually a little bit longer uh, blog post and transcript as well. So again, it's giving the person who's consuming your content all. The the options for them because if you're only doing video you're missing out on everybody else if you're only doing audio missing out so um making sure to, to obviously deliver in the way that they want to consume it yes exactly have have them in mind and and people want to consume content in different ways and to repurpose this way it, it's it's incremental work right it's not Absolutely. doubling your effort so uh be be kind to your audience um, yeah, good, exactly. good. Well, I know you have lots of resources on your website, maybe point our listeners to how to connect with you and with your company and what they might find on your website. 
Absolutely. So all the uh, social platforms, we are Go Rogue X. Um, you can find us there. Uh, we have our podcast, Rogue Creators. Um, that is uh, that is on our website, goroguex.com slash podcast. Um, we have some resources there. So we've kind of combined our podcast and our blog together. Uh, so I would say that there are, are uh, we had an episode a while back, um, and I can make sure that you have the link for this, but it was uh, six videos that your website needs. Um, I think that would be a great one for if you're just getting kind of started in audio um, or video, uh, that's a great one to be able to check out. And we, we discuss that all the time. We want to make it easy for people to get into audio using audio. I keep saying audio using video, uh, setting up the, you know, the technical side of it. Uh, yeah. but it's, it's really not, it's not too difficult. Uh, there's some other, some great resources out there as well, uh, to just get started. Hey, video is nothing without the audio. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and it's very, I, I very true. I want to put a plug in for your, your monthly feature on your podcast, which is, what's it called? Things you need to know. In the know. In yeah. the know. It's, it's in changed the know. about three times. So yeah. <laughs> in the know. Yeah. And uh, so, so for your listeners, so monthly, uh, Brian and his co host feature just digital marketing trends. And it was very informative. I loved it. So go back and listen to December. It was awesome. And, and subscribe so you can hear the next one. So uh, thank you. Yeah, yeah you those bet. are fun to do because we get to do more research and see what's happening in the everything ch it changes every single week. So we have it plenty does. to talk about. Yeah, uh, <laughs> absolutely. And, uh, you know, you need to do that anyway for your business. So why not share it with others? So I appreciate your generosity. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, absolutely. any thank parting you. advice before we go? Uh, just hit record do it. Get out there. Don't be afraid. I mean, even with Facebook live and, and your Instagram stories or LinkedIn stories, love LinkedIn stories. Now, uh, that's just a great place to kind of test out what you're doing, getting in front of the camera. If you're not used to being in front of the camera, do a couple of stories. Uh, you can delete them. They're gone in 24 hours anyway. So <laughs> don't uh, be just try it out. You know, don't be afraid. Exactly. All right. Thank you so much, Brian. Thank you. Appreciate it, Wendy. Thanks for joining me today on Content Marketing Engineered. For show notes, including links to resources, visit truemarketing.com slash podcast. While there, you can subscribe to our blog and our newsletter and order a copy of my book, Content Marketing Engineered. Also, I would love your reviews on this podcast. So please, when you get a chance, subscribe and leave me your review on your favorite podcast subscription platform. Thanks and have a great day.